This is the sound you get when you ride over millions of fragments of ice. Some of the pieces look small enough to hold, others are the size of boulders, and some of them are, well, miniature icebergs. Now, they've all broken off this glacier you can see behind me, flowing down between these great grey mountains, where the ice reaches the sea, where there are crevasses, that's when the ice splits away and falls into the ocean. Now, scientists say that many of the glaciers here in Svalbard have been losing a lot of their volume in recent years. And one really dramatic indicator of what's happening here is this. The land over on that side was for many years thought to be connected to the mainland. They thought it was a peninsula. In fact, it was named as such on the map. But the glacier has retreated so far, so fast and so dramatically that it's now exposed all of this sea. So what was a peninsula is now revealed to be an island and the name on the map will have to change. It's just one indicator of the kind of transformation that's underway up here in the Arctic. Now, this is as close as we can get to the front of the glacier here because to get any closer would be dangerous. Just in the short time we've been here, we've seen a number of huge pieces of ice break away and crash into the ocean. Now, to understand how the changes in the Arctic could be affecting the natural world, scientists gather samples, including from the bottom of the ocean, and bring them here to this marine laboratory. Let me show you what they do. Over the past few months, scientists from half a dozen countries have been conducting a range of different experiments. In this lab, they're looking at the effect of change down on the ocean floor. They're trying to understand whether if one species like these crabs is adversely affected by the warming of the waters, whether there's a knock-on effect throughout the whole community. There's a great deal that's not known about the Arctic ecology. A key part of the research here is to investigate what's in the air, the greenhouse gases involved in climate change. And to do that, they stuck a lab right on top of this mountain to get away from any possible sources of local pollution. Now, to get up there, there's this rather weird and wonderful contraption, a miniature cable car. Well, this is one of the most exhilarating rides up the side of any mountain. It's getting us to the top of Zeppelin Mountain, where the laboratory is installed. Here's the mast that's carrying the cable up there, and the view already is becoming stunning. The field down below, the glaciers in the distance, and now the cable car is just slightly slowing as we approach our destination. And this is where you end up, near the summit of the mountain and an array of scientific instruments measuring a whole host of different chemicals in the air. This mast is where they draw the air in from to measure the greenhouse gases, to try to guarantee the purest possible samples. Now this is the most extraordinary vantage point up on Zeppelin Mountain. There is the summit itself. And down below me you've got the great sweep of the glaciers, the mountains, the field, more glaciers in the distance. Down below, you've got the community of Nye Allison, where all the scientists live and stay and do their research. What they're finding up here is a persistent rise in the greenhouse gas carbon dioxide, proof, they say, that mankind must be having an impact on the climate.
The Arctic is warming faster than any other region on Earth, and there's a simple reason for that. When the rays of the sun land on the bright white surface of the ice, most of the energy is reflected back into space, and the region stays cool. But when the ice retreats and melts, those rays fall on the darker surface of the ocean. That energy gets absorbed, warming the ocean, melting more ice, a vicious cycle then begins, what the scientists call a positive feedback, an acceleration of this dramatic change. So here at the European Weather Centre, we've been doing research on two summers which we had poor weather in, 2007 and 2008. And you can see on these maps that we had low, relatively low pressure over the UK compared to normal, but high pressure over the Arctic and Greenland in 2007. The same was true in 2008. And we did the research to figure out what the ingredients were that led to these patterns for poorer summers. Actually, the same thing has happened in 2012. You can see, again, we've had relatively low pressure over us, storms coming over us but high pressure over the Arctic and Greenland. And we're trying to figure out the role of Arctic sea ice and other factors that lead to these sorts of patterns. So we've been looking at the ingredients that lead to these poorer summers in the UK, and one of them is the Arctic sea ice cover. And you can see in these pictures, the white colors indicate the Arctic sea ice in 1983, July 1983, quite extensive all over the Arctic, the coverage of sea ice. But if we move now to 2012, uh, much reduced sea ice coverage. The white area, which represents 80% coverage of sea ice, is, is much more confined. Another really important factor, though, is the sea surface temperature in the Northwest Atlantic. And the red colors here indicate warmer than normal water in the North Atlantic. And we think these two ingredients together, the warmer water in the Atlantic and the reduced Arctic sea ice, tends to give an increased risk of poorer summer over the UK. There are other factors that take place that are influential, but these two, uh, we think, increases the probability of getting a poorer summer. We think that the amount of Arctic sea ice and um, the surface temperature of the North Atlantic, the sea surface temperature, those factors together alter this North Atlantic um, circulation, which we call the Arctic Oscillation. And sometimes the Arctic Oscillation means that the jet stream is further to the north of the UK in summer, so we get relatively good summers. And sometimes the Arctic Oscillation moves the jet stream to the south. And this Arctic Oscillation is uh, created and, and uh, developed by the amount of Arctic sea ice and the temperatures of the water in the North Atlantic. This is a picture of the Northern Hemisphere. And you can see the uh, jet stream in the upper atmosphere, strong band of winds. In 2006, when we had a relatively good summer, the jet stream was to the north of the UK. We've been doing research on 2007, which was a poor summer in the UK. You can see the jet stream is dipping much further to the south, and the storms were coming over us, leading to our poor summer. Then almost the same thing happened in 2012, jet stream much further south, storms coming over us, wet and windy summer weather.